When you make any edit with Premiere Pro, whether it's by dragging and dropping with the mouse or using the keyboard, which is the comma or the full stop key, or using the buttons at the bottom of the source panel, or even by dragging and dropping from the project panel directly onto the timeline, what you're actually doing is a three-point edit of some kind. And the three points are usually the beginning of the bit that you want, the end of the bit that you want, and where you want it to go on your timeline. And let me give you a simple example of what I mean. I'm going to pick up a shot here. Let's see, maybe uh, Joe Curve is a good one. We've got a shot here of this cyclist. Let me zoom out. There you go. She comes out of the curve and she comes around and then she goes off again. So let's say I'm going to go from just that moment there as the bike comes around the curve. I'm going to mark an in. You can see there's already an in and out mark there. And just for the record, if there is an in or an out mark already there, you don't need to remove them to put another one on. You can only ever have one in or out mark on a clip. So if there is an out mark, for example, as there is here, and I want this clip to be a bit shorter like that, then I'm going to just press O for out point on my keyboard or click on the button and you'll notice that the old one disappears. There can only be one in mark and one out mark on a clip. These marks are also known as points and you can see I've got two already. There's my first one and there's my second one. The third mark or the third point is the timeline and in this case it's the playhead. Now if you drag and drop you're not even using three-point edits at all. You're just using the mouse and ignoring all of those controls in the interface. But if you do use the keyboard or the buttons, Premiere Pro needs to know when in time the clip should begin. In this case, I've got my playhead set up. Here it is. So this is my third point. Premiere Pro will line up the in point on the clip with the current position of my playhead. So when I press one of these buttons, there you go, there's the clip. Now I'm just going to undo that because it's a bit longer than we had on view. Let me show you that again. I just press Control Z or Command Z to undo there. And let me click the button again now. And there you go. You can see that the playhead was here. That's the beginning of the shot. And now the playhead's moved to the end ready for the next clip. Now in this instance, we're performing what's classically referred to as a three-point edit, but we're kind of cheating because we haven't really added the third point. We've just used the playhead as if it were an in point. We want to match up our in points on the timeline and in the source panel. So I'm going to undo this with Control Z, Command Z. And this time on the timeline, I'm going to press the I key to add an in mark. And I haven't bothered adding an out mark. I've just got an in mark. I'm going to move my playhead out of the way so you can see that space on the timeline. Now, if you have no in mark on the timeline, Premiere Pro will use the playhead as an in mark for this purpose. But if you do have an in mark, as I do now, when you make an edit, Premiere Pro will honor the in mark instead of the playhead. So here you can see, there we go. The edit arrived here, not over on the left where the playhead was, but here where the in mark was. And once again, my playhead has jumped to the end of the clip ready for the next shot. Now that you've got the concept of three-point edits, how's about this? If I undo again, and this time I'm also going to remove the in mark. I've just pressed shift Control x or shift Command x to remove all in and out marks on the timeline. This time I'm going to position my playhead a little bit later and I'm going to add an out mark. Now, the in and out mark controls under the program monitor control the timeline, whereas the ones under the source monitor are for your source clips. So I'm going to click here and add an out mark, but no in mark. And again, I'm going to move my playhead out of the way. So you can see the out mark is there in position. And now when I add my clip, you can see the end of the clip is lined up with where my out mark was and the beginning of the clip has kind of rolled back. The duration has come from the in and out marks in the source and it's just filled in the gap as best it can. The rules of insert and overwrite edits still apply when you use this former three-point edit where you're putting the out mark in rather than the in mark. So if I undo again and I'll remove my marks again and I'll position my playhead between the second and third clip on the timeline and I'll mark an out point now, if I insert, 
I've got a problem because I've specified that my clip, which is longer than the gap available on the timeline, should go into that space. And so Premiere Pro is giving me a series of options. This is a fit to fill edit. I'll come back to that another time. What I'm going to do is remove those marks and I'll just put in a couple more shots just so I can show you what's going on here. I'm just dragging and dropping straight from the bin because I want to just show you this one technique. So there we go. I've positioned my edit line between these two clips and I'm going to mark an out point only. And now let's try that again. I'm going to insert and there you can see what's happened. Premiere Pro has inserted the clip based on the position of the out mark and it's still shoved everything out of the way. If I just undo so you can see that, there's my out mark. Let me move my edit line out of the way. I've got Joe and Alicia putting on Helm 2 here and then interview noise here. There's my out mark. I'm going to insert edit and you can see what's happened is Premiere Pro's worked out what the in point should have been and then inserted from that point, splitting up this clip. It's actually acted as if I'd used an in mark instead. That's because I didn't insert edit. If I undo and do the same thing again, but this time an overwrite edit, much simpler. Premiere Pro's just laid this clip back in position and replaced the end of that Joe and Alicia shot. If this seems confusing just watching a video, don't worry about it. Put some clips on the timeline and try all of the options. And I should add that it's extremely rare to use the outmark to line up a shot where the outmark is lined up with the outmark on the clip. It's extremely rare to do that rather than the inmark. But what's less rare, and I'm just going to undo a few times here, get rid of those extra shots. What's less rare is this. I'm going to mark an in and an out on the timeline. You can see I get this highlighted region showing me where my clip is going to go. In this case, I'm specifying a duration by positioning marks on the timeline. I've just used the keyboard to do it. In the source panel, I'm going to remove my marks altogether with Shift Control X or Shift Command X. And I'm just going to choose either an in mark or an out mark. The reason I don't need to add both is that I'm going to get a duration anyway from the timeline. Now I can see at the top right here, just above the timeline, or rather I should say the bottom right of the program monitor, that I've got 6 seconds and 13 frames selected. So over in my source, let's say I want the beginning of the clip, and let's say the beginning is the bit that matters, the end is not so important, and this is commonly the case, one end of the clip matters, not both. I'm going to mark just an in point, and now when I do my, in this case, overwrite edit, just watch this space. I'm going to click the button, and my clip has filled the space. And what's happened is Premiere Pro's lined up the in marks, because that's the mark I gave in the source, and it's just taken enough of the clip to fill the gap. This is referred to as a reverse three-point edit. It's a reverse three-point edit because the duration is on the timeline rather than in the source panel. In any case, we're working with three-point edits here where the duration is coming from either the source or the timeline. And the fourth point is worked out automatically. If I undo, you can see I've got a duration here. So Premiere Pro is automatically going to take 6 seconds and 13 frames of my source. But what happens if I take too little? What happens if I add an out mark on my source? And you can see here I've got 2 seconds and 21 frames selected now. There's my in to out duration. But the timeline is 6 seconds and 13 frames. Well, this is where, again, we get this fit clip dialog box. Whenever you make this choice, let's call it, rather than a mistake, it's commonly a mistake, but you might well choose to do it. Premiere Pro is going to give you all of the logical options for how you want to fix the problem. Right now, I've got four marks and they're different durations and Premiere Pro has to know what to do about it. So I can either say, OK, just ignore the out mark on the sequence. Or I can say, ignore the in mark on the sequence. This is going to allow me to use the shorter selection in my source clip. Or I can say, no, no, change the speed of the clip so that it plays in slow motion 
It's the same content between my in and out marks, but it's going to play for the full duration on the timeline. If I click OK, and then you can see if I play this, I now have a slow motion shot. So this is a creative use of a four point edit. And a very common way to do this would be on shots of a sunset. Imagine if you've got a really long shot, maybe 10 minutes long of the sun setting, and you want that to fit about a 10 second part of your timeline. Just set up four points, two on the source, two on the timeline, and make the edit, and Premiere Pro will automatically give you the option to fill that duration on the timeline, speeding up the clip in that instance rather than slowing it down. So that's an overview of the different ways you can carry out three and four point edits with Adobe Premiere Pro CS6.